Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So instead of filming in my office as I usually do, we're currently in our room. Or should I say BB's room because she has made herself right at home. And I'm going to show you my jewelry collection and storage today. Now this is a fine jewelry collection because that's what I'm into. I got rid of all my costume jewelry around the time that I graduated law school. I was horrified at how much money I had spent on like Forever 21 jewelry, all of which had pretty much fallen apart. And it really was a good decision for me because even, you know, when I was buying that kind of jewelry, I just didn't really love it. I seemed to just do it because everybody else around me was doing it too. Um, and I had really been raised to embrace fine jewelry and save up for it. And it was very much like what I tended to be gifted as well from a pretty young age. So this collection that I'm about to show you is um, comprised of my own designs. So I just launched um, lavender pearls. And so you'll see quite a few of my designs and I'll show you how I store my Nouvel Pearl pieces, my collection has expanded um, partly because of that because I've got my own designs in there um, and then it's comprised really of I would say 50% pieces that I've been gifted by family um, since I was around 13 years old some of them are also heirlooms family heirlooms that have been handed down to me and then the rest of it would be a few pieces that I've purchased for myself as well but those are rare I know a lot of you have questions about that so I'm going to show you how I store and take care of all of my sterling silver pieces and and yeah, I'm just going to show you um, where everything lives and how I like to store it in my little tips and tricks. So I hope that you find this video useful. It goes without saying, I'm not making this video to brag in any way. I'm just showing you what I have, what I love. And yeah, that's about it. I'm a jewelry lover. My grandma was a magpie. My mom is a magpie. And I am no exception. Um, I'm just the one who turned it into a business. So um, I now have my own website, nouvelleparole.com. And um, yeah, I love everything um, involving jewelry, precious stones, and especially pearls. So I thought I would start by giving you a little bit more of a distance shot. So this is our dresser. It is from West Elm and we still absolutely love it. It's just, it fits so much stuff and it's a perfect blend of Joe and I's style. Um, so my side is on the right hand side and Joe just has some books and other miscellaneous things on the left hand side. So we will go into the right hand side and I'll show you um, where I keep my jewelry. All right, so coming in a little bit closer, let me show you the individual units. So this over here reminds me so much of an afternoon tea um, stand, but it's got a really heavy base. So if you've got animals around and you're worried about things toppling, this one is a good one. It's from Anthropology. I'm guessing they'll probably still have something similar. And I just really like it. I love a mixed metals look. So this has got the gold and this is more silver over here. Um, and I keep a lot of my Nouvelle Pearl pieces on here. So we'll probably finish off with this one and go from right to left. I always keep my perfume on a little tray so as not to damage the dresser with the perfume. And I just want to quickly mention that although I do like having my perfume on the dresser, I don't put it on at the same time as jewelry because perfume can really tarnish silver, can really damage pearls, and it's just not a good idea in general around jewelry. So really what I do is I'll shower, put my perfume on, go get ready, do my makeup, and then the very last thing I do before I head out the door is come back here and select my jewelry and it's one of my favorite parts of the day. Then over here I've got a Lalique crystal bowl with the heart card carved out. This was a gift from my godfather and inside it I keep another heirloom so it's two beautiful pieces that are very meaningful to me that go together and this is my Tiffany by Concord watch. This was my mother's watch. She purchased it as a push present for herself after giving birth to me I believe um, or just before and then she gave it to me when I graduated from my master. So very very special to me. I have to say it still kind of feels like my mom's watch that's on loan but yeah, it is mine and I absolutely love it. I would never get another watch for everyday wear. Another sort of very old thing, this little very damaged sterling silver kitten is something that I've had my whole entire life. I am a crazy cat lady in case you hadn't already figured it out from the real life cat. And it's a little ring holder. So I usually put the rings that I'm currently wearing on here. Um, so over here I've got my David Yurman Albion ring. I had to have this. I asked for 
wore it for either Christmas or birthday after I had seen it for years on Lauren Conrad. I was obsessed with it. Um, hers is a different color. I want to say it's yellow and this one is the really pale blue green preciolite and then I've got a little dainty garnet ring that I bought for myself just from a um, jeweler downtown that had a sale and I've got a little um, chevron style diamond ring as well and this little chevron diamond ring is from Bonnie Levi at Nordstrom um, I wouldn't say that you get very much for your money in terms of diamonds they're essentially the off cuts of diamond making that they set into really pretty designs so if you can get them on sale I really highly recommend checking it out for dainty pieces but in terms of an investment piece you don't really get much if anything in terms of carat weight but I'm okay with that and I love anything chevron so it's a nice little everyday ring. Of course on my fingers I've currently got my tanzanite ring which was a gift from my mom it's actually one of her rings that she gave me and then these are a very special piece to me from both my sets of grandparents and they have the wedding years on them on the inside inscribed um, so super meaningful one of them is rose gold and the other one is yellow gold. A box here from Pottery Barn this is from I think a now defunct online retailer called Bombay uh, they had some really great jewelry boxes when they were Around. If they've somehow revitalized, I will include them down below. But I like a really classic stand-up jewelry box like this because you can actually hang pieces on the inside and it's got a lot of storage that um, works for different pieces than more of a flat box like this. Go through these right to left and I'll show you everything that's inside. In my Pottery Barn jewelry box, which is a pretty true light Tiffany Robbins egg blue, it's looking a little bit lighter on camera because of the poor lighting in this room um, but it really does fit a lot I'm very very happy with this box it's got a mirror inside it and two levels let me show you everything that is in here I can probably tilt it a little bit so that you can see better there we go um, so over here I've got all of my little charms that go with chains that I'll show you in a moment so I've got some Tiffany keys that really should be um, nicely sealed and something to protect them from air and therefore tarnishing but Tiffany's does do free jewelry cleaning so I don't you know mind that too much and then everything else in here is gold so I've got a little Cartier charm a little gold lobster from Tiffany's a little piece of candy here that was um, from my mom when she was a little girl and then another really pretty charm very unique from Tiffany's that's an actual little oyster with a pearl inside it so I love that very very special to me and then I've got a jade pendant here that I think belonged to my grandma and I've got a little rose gold leaves charm this is from F not the best quality designer but really pretty pieces really nice designs this was a gift for when I passed the bar um, but unfortunately the chain broke so I actually need to go and buy a new rose gold chain from somewhere because um, it broke twice after being fixed and so that's why I say that the quality was not um, necessarily amazing none of the little diamonds have ever come off so that's a good thing um, and then over here I've got some rings I've got rings um, everywhere I'm a big ring person so um, I've got one from Tiffany's here which is a little lock I've got a very special piece here this is a black Tahitian pearl so you can see it's got peacock tones to it it's got tones of purple and green and it's beautifully iridescent almost like an oil slick kind of look it's got hearts on either side um, but the size of it and the quality of the pearl is amazing because we did get it directly from a pearl farm the first time we visited there my last birthday that my mom gave me this is a ring from her collection and it's really pretty it's got a lot of movement to it which I really like the rings with garnets believe both belong to my grandmother she had a real fondness for garnet jewelry this one is I think really really pretty it's almost kind of like Victorian looking and then this was a gift for when I was I think 16 and it's really pretty it's an amethyst and you can see it's got a really true rich purpley color as opposed to the tanzanite which is more of like a periwinkle kind of purple and then I've got a little ruby heart that my mom gave me from her own collection really pretty with little diamonds here this is a little bit of a jumble that I would say is not perfect storage but none of these things will be easily damaged by each other 
um, given that this box doesn't really see much movement. This is uh, emeralds, and my mom actually ordered this from India for me, but I don't think it was very expensive. It was from eBay, um, <laughs> and it turned out very beautiful. I always get a lot of compliments from it. Um, the metal actually intentionally has more of an aged kind of look, so it's not tarnished. It's meant to look this way. Got some jade earrings that Joe got me for Christmas. These are very, like, Canadian style, I would say, a little bit more modern. And then I've got a few pieces here. These are as close as I would get to costume jewelry. These are plated and they're from Nordstrom. Same thing here, it's a silver plate, little um, star earrings. Very pretty. Um, I wouldn't say I wear these pieces a ton though. Then in the middle are the pieces that I am currently wearing and obsessed with at any point in time. So of course that would be my lavender pieces. So this is my lavender dewdrop necklace. I'm obsessed with how this looks. I think it's such a pretty unicorn necklace. So each different piece of my line now comes with lavender pearls. And I'm just so obsessed with how they turned out. They're getting a little bit washed out by the lighting in here again, but they just have beautiful tones in them they have a little bit of pink a little gray and then just the prettiest soft lavender um, I got my nails done especially to sort of celebrate the release um, and it's a pretty perfect match and I just uh, so excited about these so that's my dewdrop necklace which you can wear long um, or doubled up and then I've also got my pendant earrings also in the lavender and my stud earrings as well matching studs in lavender too. I'm currently reaching for every day because otherwise it would be stored in a pouch to prevent the sterling silver from tarnishing. Um, but you really can keep them out for a while, you know, it's all right to keep whatever piece you're wearing on repeat out, especially in a box like this because it is getting protection from the air, which is what causes sterling silver to tarnish. Other things that really help to prevent tarnish, like I said before, is not to get any perfume or hair products on your sterling silver jewelry, um, and also to avoid sweating in them as well too much, so take them off at the gym. Um, but yeah, they do fine here in the middle, and all of the pieces that I'm showing you, other than the lavender, which I have recently created, are over two years old, and you'll see that there's not really very much tarnish on them, because I take really good care of them. So you can always polish all of the sterling silver elements, but I find the better care you take, the less that needs to happen. Alright, so here's my hoops collection. These ones are from Effie, and they match with that little pendant that I showed you. They are also rose gold. They're what's called huggy style earrings, so really small hoops that hug your earlobe. I love how these look. I love the rose gold. I'm always a little bit of paranoid of losing one though because I feel like the mechanism on it is not as secure as my treat to myself for having a good year in business. Um, so these are from Bloomingdale's actually. Totally unexpected place to get them. They were featured in my recent luxury haul and they are diamond hoops and you can see they're significantly larger larger their one inch diameter and they feature this push button closure which is so well made and you get that click every time they're so comfortable so secure I'm so so pleased with these and they do regularly go on sale so I will link them down below and I would say hold out for a sale and then they are worth every penny they'd make such a beautiful gift and you get compared to other you know luxury places to get them you really do get a lot of sparkle for your money and then the other two pairs of hoops I tend to wear these ones in the summer a lot they're a little bit bigger so I've got white gold ones these are from the real real they're hollow so very light and comfortable and then I've got just a really inexpensive pair from the bay but what I like about these is that they're um, three tones so they've got um, white gold rose gold and yellow gold woven throughout I think there's something like 10 karat gold but they're very light and comfortable so I still really like them. Alright, so in this section, one of my favorite sections, this is my stud section. So I've got my little sapphire studs with diamonds. These were um, actually purchased in Hong Kong. I really love them. They're very classic looking. And then I've got two pairs of starfish earrings from Tiffany's. So I've got the sterling silver ones and then very special gift. I've got the ones with the little diamond in the middle in the 18 karat yellow gold. I've got some really classic little gold knots, little studs, and then I've got my other present for starting my business that I got for myself. And these are from Quiet. They are the martini setting with the three prongs, and I really love these. They have 
just done me so well. I wear them a ton. They're my earrings that I reach for, um, I would say, on repeat along with Nouvelle Pearl studs. Um, these are my most worn earrings. I've been wearing my diamond hoops a lot because they're new, um, but overall these would be my most worn earrings would be the Nouvelle Pearl studs and the um, quiet diamond studs. I'm, I'm a big fan of little earring studs. They're so comfortable for wearing to work. And then in this section down below, I've got all of my other pearl earrings that aren't Nouvelle Pearls. And so I try and segregate them again to protect the pearls. So I've got black pearls here, Tahitian black pearls, and they are a slightly lesser grade than this ring. So this ring you can see has a really peacocky, super bright green. These are very pretty too, but they're more of like a gray pearl with some purple um, reflex to them. But they're still really gorgeous and I love them. And this is a super high grade like the ring, but it's actually intentionally more of a blue-green. Um, so very, very pretty. It's got a ton of luster, really beautiful pearl, very perfectly round. Um, and I love this. I think it's such a nice little pendant. Um, Tahitian pearls are just, they're so expensive, even if you get them in Tahiti, but they are beautiful. Little calla lilies that my mom got me. I'm not sure where these are from, but they're very pretty. And so that is the first tray. I've shown you everything in it, so let's take a look at what's underneath. So on the second level of my jewelry box, I store all of my bracelets. So my pearl necklaces actually have detachable pearl bracelets in them, and I don't store those here. I tend to store them with the necklaces. So this is everything else. I've got a David Yerman cable sterling silver bracelet. This has little diamonds on the side, so it's nice it goes with everything. And then I've got two Tiffany's bangles, which were gifts from my godfather. They're from the T & Co 1837 line. I love the noise they make, but because they are a little bit noisy, I tend to wear them pretty seldom to work. Um, but nonetheless, to me, they're very musical and I do enjoy it. And then I've got two other smaller bangles um, that are just, you know, pretty inexpensive. A sterling silver and a little gold-plated one. And then over here, I've got other bracelets. I've got a malachite, stretchy, um, semi-precious stone bracelet. And then this one, which is gray stones. It's from Nordstrom. Do not ask me what these are. I have no idea. It's nothing exciting. Um, but what's underneath is pretty exciting. So this is from Cartier, and I actually had a family member who worked there. So I do have a few gifts that I received when I was younger, um, while she was still working there. And this is a little ball pendant. So you essentially have it on your wrist, and the little ball dangles, and it's so pretty. It's just, it creates a lot of movement because of the dangly bit. I would say I don't wear it a ton, but I do absolutely love the design of it. I've got this bangle, which is from a local designer. I'll link her down below. I forget her name. Um, Leah Alexandra, I think, um, this one is from. And then I've got a bangle that my mom gave me that was hers. And it's the three-tone again. We love mixed metals, what can I say? So it's got white gold, rose gold, and yellow gold. And it makes a really beautiful musical sound, but it's a little bit quieter than the Tiffany's ones because it's less metal, so less heavy. Um, so those are my bracelets over here and then I've got bracelets that lie flat down below so of course if you watch vlogmas you'll know all about this and I won't repeat it but this is a tennis bracelet that Joe got me so special I feel so lucky to have this I had always wanted a tennis bracelet it came with an absolutely awful clasp though that was actually defective and so we brought it to a local jeweler who replaced it quite smartly and as it should be with a box clasp that has a safety so something to look for in bracelets like like this that are expensive is a box clasp that will have a safety because it's just it's how bracelets like this should be made because it's an eternity style bracelet it shouldn't have a chunky clasp so it's something to look for this um, in case you're curious is a vintage bracelet and it's really interesting because it's actually got cloisonné um, which is enamel work essentially with cat's eye stones so really pretty very different piece that I love. It's like a conversation piece. And then I've got a chain um, yellow gold bracelet that my mom gave me. This is old. It's from Belgium. But I think the workmanship on it is really beautiful. And this one is very comfortable to wear. I like the tennis bracelet, but bigger. Um, so I love just, I don't know how comfortable it is for all day wear. 
um, as opposed to more of a solid style like this, which tends to be a little bit more bulky when typing and kind of get in the way. And then this piece I really love. Um, it's also a vintage piece. This one is gold plated though, I believe. Um, and I love how this looks. It has a very like dynasty kind of um, vintage look to it. Um, the only thing I would say is it does catch on my clothing a little bit, which is a pet peeve of mine. I design all my jewelry to try and um, never have that because it really is annoying when you have a pricey cashmere sweater and things get caught on it. All right, so in the middle here, like I said, this box is from Bombay and it's got different compartments. So I'll push it to the side a little bit so that you can see. On this side, I actually have all of my chains hanging. And this is such a good tip. If you can manage to have your chains be hanging, they will never tangle on you. And it just works really well. So they're all yellow gold chains. I think the one that is most exciting to me would be this one because it's actually a chunky chain so I wouldn't put a pendant on this one. Um, but it's from Tiffany's and it was my 13th birthday present. I think I would say it's the first really expensive piece of jewelry that I received um, from my godfather and it was so exciting when he got that for me. I was either 13 or 14, I can't remember which one. Um, but yeah, I love that. And then over here I have the pearls that I had before. I had Nouveau pearls in my life um, before I came up with the design. So I've got some freshwater pearls. These were actually given to me when I was born. What can I say? Europeans do that. I know it's kind of weird, but it's nice to have when you grow up. And then I've got some dollar pearls. That's what these are called. They're discs shaped and I've got square pearls as well which are kind of interesting both of those are from kind of like artisan places and I like love the magnetic closure on that door isn't that good um, and then in the middle I've got little drawers and in here I would say I have pieces that I wear a little bit more seldom so at the top I have a piece of jewelry actually of my own design um, these are citrons they're faceted teardrop citrons so I made this necklace many years ago when I was doing my apprenticeship for a jeweler I love this piece um, and yeah, I don't know. It's kind of different, but it's my own design and I definitely wear it more for kind of dressy events because it has a lot of shine to it. Got this piece, which you may have actually seen me get um, in Thailand. I did vlog a long time ago. Um, I vlogged that trip and these are beautiful, really chunky pearls. Um, so they're like a pale, pale peachy color set on gold with little tiny um, stones. I believe they're actually white sapphires. Um, and then, yeah, I just love the Baroque pearls on these. Um, I absolutely love pearls that have um, just beautiful eccentricities. So not really lumpy ones, but Baroque pearls that have really gorgeous, unique shapes and a really beautiful luster. I'm really big on, so that's what these are. And in this second drawer, I've got a lot of my Tiffany Sterling silver pieces, and you can see that they actually have come home from being cleaned at Tiffany's fairly recently. So I've got a ring here with little hearts, pretty classic Tiffany's piece. I've got my ball stud earrings as well. I don't know what it is about this design, but it tends to tarnish a little bit more quickly. So I'm always um, careful to wrap it up, but I do love them. Um, when I started working, these were pretty much what I wore every single day. Two Tiffany's pouches with sterling silver pieces inside them, like I said, which have come home from being polished. I've got the matching ball bracelet. And then I've got another pouch, and I'll show you what's inside. Big surprise, it's the matching ball necklace. Really beautiful shine, kind of chunky necklace. And so you can see where I got the idea from for my Nouvelle Pearl pouches, which I will show you in a second with the drawstring. These are so good for protecting um, against tarnishing. And what I recommend doing is having a little part of it poking out. So you can see, this way you can see what's inside, and because this is the fastening, you won't really see it if it's the part that gets tarnished a little bit faster. And then down below here, I tend to keep pieces that need repair or are seldom worn. So this one is one that needs repair. These are my Mikamoto pearls, and they need restringing because they have not been restrung in as old as I am. It's actually quite amazing that the silk is still hanging on, but I wouldn't want to take any more chances with them. So you can see how beautiful they are. They have amazing amazing luster. They're the most beautiful kind of creamy white um, with a really classic um, box clasp which is I think in my opinion the best clasp to have on a pearl necklace. Little really pretty 
um, turquoise ring, but um, you can see gold is a soft metal, so it flattened a little bit um, from years of wear, and so I need to get it reshaped. And then in the side section, let me show you what lives here. So I've got all sterling silver pieces here. I've got the classic Return to Tiffany's toggle style necklace. I have to say I rarely wear this one anymore. Um, it does feel a little bit year 2000 to me, um, but I do still really like it. This one needs to go in for a clean at some point soon. I love this necklace. This is another gift from my godfather. It came before the gold necklace and it's sterling silver. Really interesting piece. I don't think I've ever seen it on anybody else. It's oval links and it forms like a really chunky, pretty chain. This is a gift from my mom, our fish necklace in sterling silver. I don't think they have this anymore, but I love it. And then I've got a little tag. This is the same collection as the Bangles, the Tiffany & Co. 1837 collection. Really simple, modern piece. My little tiered tray here, I have all Nouvelle Pearl jewelry except for what's in this box. So this is a Tiffany's box and it contains gifts from Joe except for this one Bonnie Levi piece. And I wouldn't recommend this one at all because the chain tangles like no one's business, but it's very pretty and dainty. Um, so I got that for myself and I got it on sale on Nordstrom Rack. Um, and then I've got two pieces from Joe, which are very dainty as well, but they don't tangle as much. I find the Tiffany's chain to be higher quality. Um, there's something about the links, the little oval links that don't tangle too much. It has a little pear-shaped diamond, and this was a gift for our one-year anniversary. I love it. I wear it almost every day. And then I've got a little chain bracelet with a little classic Tiffany heart. It's got little floating diamonds on either side. I believe it's part of the Diamonds by the Yard collection. Very dainty and pretty as well. And then let me show you what else I keep here. So I have, again, the earrings that I'm wearing on repeat, I will keep out uh, because I wear them frequently enough that they're not going to get tarnished just sitting there. So these are my lavender pendant style earrings. They are called the Pearlberry earrings. They're a grape style earring. I love these so much because they're like a statement piece that you can wear every day. I'm just so pleased with how they turned out. The little pearls are really delicate. They have a beautiful luster to them in the lavender color and they also come in rose gold. My classic rose gold pearls. One of my signature colors. It's got peach and pink and gold undertones and then in this little bag so this is how they come when you buy them um, with the little hooks sticking out so they don't get tangled with each other um, I know little Ziploc bags might not seem like the classiest solution but for earrings like this I have to say they work so well so when they come they come in a little pouch I'll show you I've got some spare pouches lying around here and they come in a pouch like this um, inside a Ziploc bag inside the pouch and I find them just is a practical but still aesthetically pleasing solution and then in this one doubled up which I wouldn't recommend but it's my own design so I can do what I like I've got the dove gray and the classic white pearlberry earrings really pretty and so those are all the colors that I have available for pearlberry earrings and then down below here I've got my lariat style necklace so this is essentially a long piece of leather that I knot with baroque dove gray pearls it's very long too long to show you in this shot um, but the nice thing about this one is it has no sterling silver so I don't need to worry about wrapping it at all. It's a very casual piece that I often reach for at weekends. It looks really nice with just like a t-shirt or something like that. Um, it adds a little bit of edge to any outfit. And you can wear it as a bracelet or a necklace, long or short. I've got lots of different ways of tying it up on my site. Here, again, you can see my tricks. So I keep the ends poking out um, because it's a piece that goes behind your neck so you won't notice too much if it tarnishes a little bit. And these are my dove gray pearls from my line. And last thing, I also store my dewdrop necklaces in these little pouches. Even though the dewdrop necklace is a lot easier to get cleaned than the um, classic design because the classic design has spacers between each pearl so you need to be really careful if you're going to be cleaning this design. For this one it's so much easier but I still like to keep it in a pouch to prevent tarnishing. Anyway, and that is the same one as the lavender, same design, but in dove gray pearls.
So that is my jewelry collection. We've gone through everything now. I hope you found this video useful. I will link everything that I can find links for down below for you. And I will see you in my next installment on style. Thanks for watching.